Kochi, U.S. Stunning. I've come to Kochi and in particular the old part of the city, Fort Kochi. This was established by the Europeans in 1500. It was the first European settlement in India and it is so beautiful. Come and let me show you around Fort Kochi. From the beautiful Portuguese architecture to the lesser known parts of this town. So we're at the Santa Cruz Basilica. This is an old cathedral that was built by the Portuguese more than 500 years ago. And it's beautiful. Let's have a look. There's quite a lot of old Portuguese architecture here in Fort Kochi because the Portuguese were here from, I think the 14 or 1500s. And just behind the basilica is this other beautiful little church that's uh, now part of a government school. It's Sunday, it's not school day today, so I can come in. It's really peaceful and um, first impressions of Kochi in general and, and Fort Kochi is um, it's really lush and green and after being in the deserts of Rajasthan for about the last three or four weeks this is um, really a lovely change of pace. Okay some facts for history nerds like me. In 1498 the great Portuguese explorer Vasco da Gama arrived here in what is now Kerala. He became the first European to reach India via sea and thus opened up the sea lanes from Europe to India. Kochi was established in 1500 and became the first European settlement in India. The Portuguese ruled Kochi until 1663 and then the Dutch ruled 1663 to 1773 before the British. St. Francis Church was built in 1503 and is one of the oldest churches in India. Da Gama died here in Kochi and was buried in St. Francis Church before his remains were returned back to Portugal. Now maybe you're wondering why there's so many Christian churches in Fort Kochi, okay? Because it's a Hindu country. When the Portuguese came here, they found there were already Christians here. I'll tell you that story and why a little bit later. It's uh, all very charming and very Instagrammable. And it's not overrun with tourists, which is even better. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to love, not afraid to love you. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to love, not afraid to love you.
And behind me is Vasco da Gama Square, and that's right next to the famous Chinese fishing nets, which are about 400 years old. The nets are not operating. They, they do that in the morning and the evening when the tide is right. So they're still at the moment. But let's just uh, see if we can have a slightly closer look. They actually work, and they work from an ancient method of counterbalance with stones and logs, and uh, they haul up the catch every day. Because this spot here is where the lake and the, the backwaters meet the Arabian Sea. But there's not much happening now, so let's see if we can come back around sunset, because I think it'll be really beautiful around here. So I've been in Fort Kochi. I haven't even seen a quarter of it. I've been here for maybe about three or four hours now, and I'm loving it. It's such a really cool vibe about this town. It's very chilled, it's very historic. It's, um, it's beautiful. That really old tree behind me is actually not native to India. This has come over on the boats with either the Portuguese or the Dutch or the British in the 14s, 15s, 16s, hundreds. It's a very old tree. It's probably four or five hundred years old. And of course, with Europeans having been here for a very long time, that meant there was going to be a European cemetery somewhere. I came across the Dutch cemetery from the 1700s. It really has a sense of an old cemetery. And this is Dobigana, which is actually a place where any of the locals can come here and do their washing, because not everybody's got a washing machine at home and not everybody's got a home so this is where they can come and get all these things done those old irons are fired up by hot coals inside coconut shells coconut shell coconut using finishing after shell that want to outside in the fire do the full the lock the eye and the coals yeah i've never seen anything like this before it's uh, kind of cool so the people doing the cleaning and the washing this is their job. They, those clothes are coming in from hotels, restaurants, uh, whatever, and um, they earn a little bit of money by, by doing that. It's really hot in Kerala. It's about 33 degrees today, but it's very humid, so hot and sweaty, fresh lime juice. Oh, that's good. Yeah, very good. Next, we drop by the Bulgatti or Dutch palace built in 1774 before heading back to the beautiful Chinese fishing nets. Stunning. Wow. So far, Kochi, I love you. I love the chilled vibe here. People are really happy and friendly and um, pretty chilled. 
and uh, it's beautiful and I love the history of this place. We're going to explore some more of that tomorrow. Surprisingly there's actually not a lot of uh, foreign tourists here. I'm told that's more December, January. Um, it is now April and we're heading into April, May which is the hot season here. So maybe that scared them away. It is hot but it's only like low 30s hot. It's just the humidity you've got to get used to. Well, that was really worth coming out again because that was incredibly beautiful. It's so, I don't, you know, the photos are amazing, but it's even more amazing in real life. It's really special. Okay, I'm really hot, really sweaty, and a little bit hungry, so it's probably time now to find something to eat. So I've dropped into a place called Salt and Pepper Restaurant, and um, they've got Italian food here, but hey, when in Rome, no, it's not Rome, is it? We're in Kochi, so we're in Kochi. Eat some, uh, I've ordered a fish curry, a fish soup. That looks really good, really good. So let's see how it, if it tastes as good as it looks. Mmm, cheers. Fish curry for koji. Mm. Spicy. Spicy, but it's spicy in a good way. Mm. I'm liking it. Let's try the fish. Sorry, would you like to try this? This is the lemon, lemonade. Full of bones. Mm. But tasty. Full of bones, but tasty. See, this is one of the reasons I love traveling. I believe in Melbourne right now, it's cold and wintry. I'm sitting here, it's maybe 26, 27 degrees, warm, sultry, and I'm eating a beautiful fish curry on the side of the street in Port Kochi. I love traveling. Yeah, that fish curry was uh, as good as it looked. It was really good. Um, and now I'm heading back, and I just think one thing would top off the d first day here in Fort Kochi, and that would be an icy cold beer. I haven't had a beer in months, and with this kind of heat and humidity, oh, it's the perfect weather. Okay, I found one. And it's icy cold too. Perfect. So, I've had a great first day in Fort Kochi. Now I'm going to top it off with an icy cold beer. Cheers. Perfect. And it's a very tasty, mostly of the Bollywood stars, so if someone's come, they want to eat it. At Fort Kochi, I thought I'd treat myself to a little bit of luxury, so I booked into the Fort Bungalow. This is an old Dutch house of about a hundred years ago that's been turned into a hotel, and it was absolutely beautiful. Let me show you my room. in. Okay, beautiful big bed, we've got a fan, we've got some air con, somewhere to store my stuff, a writing desk and TV. And a bathroom with a western toilet. Bonus. Um, lovely, absolutely lovely atmosphere here at the Fort Bungalow in Fort Kochi. Hello, good morning sir. Okay, let's show start. Ready? All good to go. We came to Fort Kochi's Jain Temple because in the morning something really special happens here.
In a beautiful ceremony, an elder of the temple calls the pigeons and feeds them with prayer. And everyone's invited to join in. That was lovely, but it's really hot again, so I'm in need of a lassie. I'm told this is one of the best for Kochi. Mmm, ice cold and delicious. That is liquid gold, right there. Oh my God. Jews were a big part of Kochi's history as well. This is the Jewish cemetery, and we're about to go to Jewtown and Jew Street. Very fragrant walking down here. There's actually a lot of spice shops, as well as shops um, selling souvenirs, clothes, textiles. Um, it's a really lovely part of Fort Kochi. So if you want a souvenir, this is probably the place to come. <laughs> And um, because Kochi was such an important city on the trade routes and the spice routes, we had Chinese and Arabs, Christians and Jews all coming here to trade. And the Jews obviously stayed because there's a quarter in town in Fort Kochi that's called Jew Town. And I've got sweat in my eyes. <laughs> And uh, this is this is Jewtown. It's actually really beautiful. At the end of the street is the Cochum Baradesi Synagogue. Um, normally you can go in, but unfortunately you can't today because it's closed. But them's the breaks, huh? And you see the date on that clock? Have a look, 1760. Of course, the Jews weren't the only ones dealing with spices. There's a Muslim quarter too, with wholesale spice markets. Uh, this is a spice shop where people yeah, prepare spice the spices. Pizza. They can sell it upstairs, but I'm told they got stairs, they'll charge me a fortune. But uh, oh, this is a beautiful old building. Now, lunch time, you're bright. Pepper, yeah? Oh. Yeah? Good luck. Yes, definitely pepper. 
It's good. It's good. <laughs> it's good. Whew. <laughs> Pepper tongue. Whew. Another beautiful Portuguese style church. So Christianity first came to India here in Kerala when St. Thomas, Thomas the Apostle, one of Jesus' 12 disciples, came here in 52 AD to spread the word of Christ. And he was well received and there's actually an even older church a little bit further up the coast, about 150 k's from here. And that was the first church in India. I decided to go to the beach. So you know, Jose said he knows a really good beach, but we have to get there. It's off the island where I am because there's a whole series of islands here. So we're about to catch a ferry to get to the other side. I've been walking around in the heat and uh, I really didn't. Uh, I did have one. I had a cap, but I've lost it somewhere along the line. So what do you think, new hat? Keeping a little ball patch uh, away from the sun, that's a good thing. Mango ice cream, yeah. Mm. Mm. Welcome to Kochi, Jose Cello. <laughs> This, this is the ferry to Waipin, which is just across the bay here, and it's a great way to see the harbour in Gojin. Jeez, I hope we don't cross paths. That's getting really close. Our ferry and that big ship, I think the big ship's going to win. Going to Sarai Beach, which is about 30 kilometers from Kochi, because Jose says it's a really good beach for swimming, and in this heat, I'm hanging to have a swim. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to love, not afraid to love you. I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid, I'm not afraid to love, not afraid to love you. They all Okay, got a little bit of sunscreen on. I'm probably the whitest man in India, but uh, I need to work on my tan. So this will be the first time I've ever gone swimming in the Arabian Sea. Here it is.
um, I'm gonna get in because I've been hanging to sit to have a swim. It's a really nice beach, the sand is lovely. Um, bit of an undertow going on here though, so I don't think I'll go in very deeply. But I'm gonna turn this off and go in and actually get wet. Uh, that was great, but it was kind of like a warm bath. <laughs> it didn't cool me down at all, but it's so good to be on the beach. Because in India, I've spent a lot of time in desert country and uh, it's just so nice to be by the ocean for a change. Okay, now I gotta work on that tan. You can go in? No? No? Okay. <laughs> Namaste. Hello. Australia. 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 Yeah, yeah. Where are you from? He went to Australia. Did you? He visited Australia for a while. Oh, yeah. good. Yeah, from Australia to see. Do you like it? Is it good? Yeah. Yeah. Hello, doggy. Hello, doggy. Come here. Hello, doggy. Hello. He's a good dog. Here you go. He's a good dog. <laughs> yes, you are. <laughs> That's it for Fort Kochi. This is a really beautiful and charming part of India. Next time, we're going to head up the mountains. So, we'll see you in the next one. Cause I'm not afraid.